Hello and welcome to, welcome to um, well, Carlin's Worlds. Yeah, that should work. I'm a wanderer, a tinkerer, sometimes a nomad, a military veteran. I do things differently. There will be tinkering. I have a motorcycle, a truck, and a school bus. I live off grid, so there will be some solar, batteries, inverters, and maybe even some wind. It blows. And that's all I can fit into about 30 seconds. Oh, and please, if you like any of this, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and click that notify bell. Drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas. Share, like, comment, subscribe, notify. Oh, and Patreon if you're really an awesome kind of person. Cool. On with the show already. I guess it's all in how you define failure because I learned a lot from the experience. There's no way I could have known that without taking it apart. Going through the process and figuring it out was totally a great use of three hours. It's about what it took, I think. Okay, I bought this generator before I came out here specifically for using on the ranch. Uh, Northern Tools, I got it on sale for two twenty nine. I just noticed in one of their email adverts it's actually about 229 again now. I thought about buying another one. This one I pretty much uh, abused and wore out. Ran it several hours a day, never checked the oil like I was supposed to, never changed the oil like I was supposed to, added oil only when it shut off because it was out of oil. Pretty much just trashed it. Plus it's sucking up dirt. It's had a rough life. After the first few months, I started treating it a little bit better. Changed the oil a couple times. But pretty much tore it up. So, I was looking at their website a while back and realized that you can buy that same motor for about a hundred bucks or something like that. I'll post a link later if I think about it. So I'm like, all right. At the time, the generator was closer to $400, so I thought, okay, I'll get a motor and just swap it out. The motor that I got is uh, 202 cc's instead of 212. It's basically the same, but not quite exactly. The casting is very similar, with the exception of this piece here which is basically the rear half of the case of the motor is not the same because they had to make this so that the generator could connect to it. Think of it kind of like the bell housing on your transmission on your car. If you've ever pulled the transmission or motor out, uh, sort of like that. But I got to looking at it a little more and this is before I've taken anything apart yet. This piece is removable from the motor. And so my plan is I'm gonna completely disassemble this and then take this piece off of the new motor and switch it with this one and then reassemble this with the new motor and the old generator and then put everything back together. It's, it's either complicated or it's not depending how you look at it. In a previous life, I was an aircraft mechanic, and I also did fleet maintenance for the Postal Service, so I've replaced motors and transmissions on work trucks and different things, mail delivery trucks. I've helped remove and install jet engines on helicopters. So the basic flow top is the gas tank that works also as sort of a rain shield from to protect the rest of the generator so we take out like four bolts there disconnect the fuel line that's the vent this is the main fuel shut off and fuel line so if I leave that connected to the tank and disconnect the hose here after we take the four bolts off the whole gas tank just lifts off and gets out of the way then it looks a lot simpler um, I'm not sure if I have to disconnect all of this or if I can just disassemble it and take it off as a unit, leave that with the generator half, replace the motor half, and then put it back together again. Uh, I haven't taken the time to look up any manuals for anything like this. I'm just going to go with it and see how we do.
Worst case, it's a $229 generator to replace. And I haven't used this for several months. I got the big generator I've been using now. This is not going to be a tutorial on how to do it. I'm just going to kind of show you that it can be done, and then you're on your own after that. I don't know that I can recommend doing it. I already got the motor, so I might as well go with it. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Here, we'll just connect the clamp on the fuel vent. There's a little bit of gas in here. I don't smoke, so I don't have to worry about catching anything on fire. has a small muffler but not as big as that one so I think I like that one. Let's take the muffler out next. So there's two, look at all the oil that's from the, the old motor that was just toast. So we're going to take out this bolt and the one below it that holds the muffler to the generator head. And, and then there's these two that are for the exhaust manifold or exhaust port, not a manifold, it's only one, and then we'll get this out of the way. Um, the wiring, this is the main wire for the output of the generator, and this wire bundled down here, there's a switch for on off, and then another one down here for your low oil shut off. But there's four bolts, and then this whole panel will come off also, there's an advantage of this being on the cage because that gives you some leverage so that you can break things loose easier. So far, common tools, nothing complicated. Okay, there's going to be a little, little gasket of some sort. For its size, it's actually a pretty substantial muffler, and it is relatively quiet. I think it would be easier on me if I take it out, out of the cage, is what I'm looking at. And then I can just work with it up on top. tabs so they go back in but if I lay these out in order take a look make sure you're not snagging something so far so good good I got enough slack that I was worried about. I would just rather not have to disconnect all of them. It's not a big deal to disconnect the wires. First thing we're going to do is try to get the generator off itself. So we loosen those up. Also, be paying attention when you take things out. See if there's one bolt that's longer than the others. It's a lot easier if you can get that back in the same spot, which is why I'm trying when I'm taking things apart to put them back right away. Because if I do this, take it apart today, put it back together tomorrow, I'm way less likely to remember. Alright, now, what I'm hoping, get my stuff out of the way, this might just pull right off of the motor now. You can always hold. need a little convincing. Hey. Still 
little chance we're going to screw this up. We can be hopeful. All right. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Let's just pull the, pull the rotor out of the stator. Gives a nice chance to inspect the inside, right? Oh, I'm so glad for ninth grade shop class. They can see me now. Right. Things that spin, things that don't spin. This is dirty inside. Also kind of heavy. Dirty. I'll try to get a shot of that later. Consideration, I took a cookie break and uh, I'm drain the oil. So this is a 10 mil on the plug and they hold less than a liter of oil or a quarter or whatever. So I'm hoping that my Gatorade bottle is big enough. Gatorade bottle with a Mountain Dew top of a bottle for a funnel. Not to drop the drain plug into it. That's actually pretty clean oil. I might have put clean stuff in here for a change. That's a surprise. Okay, now I gotta pay attention again and see if there's any short ones or long ones. Cardboard is a good idea. Hang on. I had a dollar for every box that's missing a lid. And a sharpie. So let's say we draw a circle and we'll draw this to be the cylinder like so. From back. So we know where we're finding these at. And we the appropriately sized Phillips screwdriver because it's kind of pointy. You know where which bolt is which. Now we know. This piece I'm taking off on the end. It's just so you can get the bearing off, which is how you were supposed to disassemble that end of it. But since I haven't seen anything else that's obvious and removable, I can't imagine this is a hollow shaft. It would just not make any sense at all. But after you've exhausted all the normal possibilities, right? And if not, I'll need this. It'll be a lot easier to get it back together again. If I ever get that far. Haha! -ha. That's the key. And I'm glad I didn't really crank on things. 
like this was holding the whole thing in there. I'm trying to not kill this. I'm going to use a wood block and hit it hard. I'm hoping that will break it loose inside. I need to get this part to slide off. So we'll bump it a couple times and see what it does. This is like a two pound hammer, not very heavy. Oops. My special block. It's a taper fit. That's good to know. A new box motor. Um, I think I called it a 202 earlier. It's a 208 cc. 208, that one's 212. Virtually identical casting. Virtually. Not, nothing is ever perfect. But, uh, let's see if we do it this way. I had this out of the box once. That's why I convinced myself this would work. I took, a, took the time to look at it. Crash. Doubtful I would ever take the motor back. I just don't want to waste it. I, if I don't use it for this, I'll use it for something else kind of thing. And, of course, this one's got a keyway. <sighs> Frick. Unless it's also tapered. Yep, straight shot. Frick! <sighs> well. Well, the good news is I got a brand new motor for some other purpose now. I was wondering if I had a practical way that I could run that generator externally, um, like with a pulley instead of direct shaft drive. Not the way it's set up, but it would take some serious monkey in to get that to work. Uh, slip rings, commutators, well commutators would be sectioned. These are slip rings. This is a brush that fell out. Fortunately I saw it. That would be held in when this was pushed in place. There goes my funnel. So the inside looks very sci-fi, right? That's exactly what you want to see at the end of your generator. Wonderful. So, what my earlier slightly too late realization was that had I taken this apart from the back, maybe I would have seen that and figured that out, but more likely what I should have been doing is taking this off, but that still wouldn't have solved my problem, I don't think. This is you know, definitely not field serviceable by, you know, idiots like me. What I'm going to do... Since that's a taper, I tighten this part down. It should self-align, probably. Now, since this is never really going to work anyway. Which it's pretty determined it doesn't want to do. Using our handy chart, we get the three that are easy first. That seems reasonable. Is there any reason to put this thing back together at this time? Just for the sake of not losing all the parts. That's the only reason I can think of. This is your output cable. Connects to these screw terminals here. 
and there's a grounding lug here that also goes to there. This is your brush that we broke. That would go on the top here. And this piece is a grommet that fits into the slot that's right here. Okay. If I hadn't to try it, it would have bothered me that I didn't try. So I don't feel bad about trying. By the time this was smoking heavy, I already had uh, the solder online, so it wasn't such a big deal anymore. Huh. <laughs> uh, my grandma, my grandma Calm, my dad's dad, she was fond of saying, if you've come this far for nothing, how far would you go for a quarter? Of course, in her day, I'm sure a quarter was worth going somewhere for. I managed to completely disassemble the generator, the 4,000 watt one. Okay, so my plan was I've got a older generator. Well, I, I used it out here for the first year, part of the first year. And then once I had the solar panels, I really quit using the generator very often. But by that time, the, the generator was starting to smoke. So I had some money, so I went ahead and bought a big honking generator and kind of just pushed the old generator off to the side and was like, okay, I'm just not going to mess with it anymore. I saw that I could get a replacement motor from Northern Tools. Nearly identical looking. It looked very, very similar. It was a 208 versus a 212 cc, but they had to come off the same assembly line. I mean, not just because it's black, but the mounting holes are in the same spots. Um, very similar design. So I was like, all right, it's worth a shot. Because the generator, when I bought it on sale, it was two twenty nine, but <clears throat> normal price is closer to four hundred dollars for a four thousand watt generator. It's probably still worth that. So, <clears throat> and I don't remember what I spent on the replacement motor, but it was somewhere around half of the price of the generator. So a hundred, hundred and fifty, something like that. So I figured it was worth a shot, and. Uh, a couple months ago, I don't remember, I looked at it and then I just kind of put it off. So I looked at it and kind of had the motor sitting next to the generator, scoped it out, figured out it looked really, really good. Except that the rear plate of the motor had to be removed and the one that was on the generator was made specifically to mount the generator onto. All right. So what would be the generator's front face is actually the rear face of the motor. So you would have to take off the rear face of the replacement motor, basically opening up the oil cavity, redo the gasket and put this, this generator matched part onto that spot. So I'm like, okay, that's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but I've done much more complicated things. So I'm like, okay, it's worth a shot. So today I wasn't even really planning on finishing it. I just figured, okay, let me, I needed a break. I was sitting down looking at the computer. I'm like, you know, I just need to get outside. So why not? So I got the generator moved over there, put it up on the workbench and started just looking at it. I'm like, okay, if I take this off, then I can get to this, take this off. So I worked all the way through it. And uh, so I had the gas tank off, disconnected the muffler, took that off. Um, started looking at how everything was connected, disconnected the wire bundle so that the harness and the 
uh, the panel that all the plugins for the generators on had that loose. He eventually pulled the whole assembly out of the cage, had it sitting there, got the cage out of the way, and could get a really good look at it. And figured this was, it was kind of mucking around a little bit, but I, I realized, and I don't know if there was an easy way to get it out. You know, I spent some time figuring this out, but the way that the generator is connected to the output of the gas motor, it's a tapered shaft with a long bolt that goes all the way through the generator. So it's a hollow shaft on the generator. This long bolt goes all the way in and threads into the tapered crankshaft. Yeah. So if you ever taken the drill the drill chuck off of a drill press, that's a tapered fitting. So you get it on there and you just smack it on and it'll usually stay. And but it gives it a little bit of give so in case something gets jammed up on there, but you can you know, and you can just pop one up on put another one on, pop it and it'll stay on there. So it's kind of a friction fit. So taper. So that's how the output shaft of the motor drives basically the shaft of the generator. Well, in taking it apart, I managed to shear off both of the brushes that are inside the generator that make the connection. So at that point, it was, a, you know, it was kind of screwed anyway. But so I get, you know, once I got that off, I get to looking at it. I'm like, OK, because I was like, I couldn't figure out how in the frick was this shaft attached to the motor, you know, because I ended up with the the rotor part of the generator, the part that turns, the rotating part. I pulled the the shell off the generator, not really meaning to, but I was hoping it would all come off together. And I realized as I was pulling it off that the other part stayed attached to the motor. So I'm like, all right, that's kind of not what I planned on, but. So I mucked around at that for a while, and finally I realized that there was a, a bolt on the end of the shaft on the wrong end. I'm like, that's kind of weird, but tried everything else, couldn't get it off. So I turned on that a little bit, finally got it to break loose. Sure enough, it's a bolt that's this long. It goes all the way through the freaking generator to, you know, I held it beside it. I'm like, yeah, that would reach to the, the crankshaft. Go figure. So note to self for later, I got two brushes that would make the two contacts inside the generator that are on the far end, the the end of the, like where the black cover is on the generator. Those should be fairly easily replaced. Okay. So if I can you know, find that part, I can at least get that part working. Now the generator itself is still hosed because it still smokes. But what I realized is my replacement motor has a keyed shaft and the motor that's bad has a tapered shaft, so can't put one on the other. However, this is where it gets kind of fun. If I could find a matching taper, I could probably make an output, or a, basically an input drive for that generator and then drive it from an external source. One of the ideas I've been playing with for a while, and this I could just put that thing off to the side, maybe wrap it in plastic and say, come back to it in a year or two. It's not gonna, I mean, it's, I got my money's worth out of it, really. You know, it's, that was my main source of power until I got solar. So if I just walk away from it, all right, fine, you know. Um, but if I can get it to work somehow, so my thought is if I could, adapt a shaft to it. Maybe get something like a bearing block um, to mount to the front of it. You know, so make a plate. And I've seen this done on electric car conversions. They take um, basically the bell housing of their existing transmission, take an aluminum plate, match all the holes, bolt, the plate to the transmission from one side and then run bolts the other way to mount their electric motor to the transmission. All right, so something like that. So mount a bearing block and a proper shaft coming out the front of this thing so I could then put a pulley on it. And one thought is 
I love the idea of making a universal power pack. And that's what I'm just going to call it, is the universal power pack that just makes the most sense. So I could have a generator head, and what I'd have to come up with is electronic speed control. But that's kind of easy on the electric car world. So come up with, I'm going to say a PID controller, I think is the word. So you would measure the output of the generator and then use that as a input to a signal device that would then tell your drive motor speed up or slow down. And my understanding is the PID controller can figure out how much to adjust the drive motor to get the right speed so that it's not cycling too much. It'll say, okay, if I give you this much and you give me this much, let me do the ratio and let me give you just a little bit more and then that'll put me where I want to be. It's kind of the idea. So, I'm thinking a servo controlled throttle on a universal motor could then give me the output I need and I could still dial it in if I needed to, give it a little potentiometer for a trim, you know, get a trim pot and measure the output and then adjust it. And then it's got to be able to do speed sensing is the trick. So when you put a load on it and it drops the down, then you can adjust the speed back up again. So that's the trick. But take universal motor, bolt it to the cage of the generator, and then run a shaft across with the belt tensioner. Boom, you're done. Now you can drive it at the right speed. Okay. And since that motor was supposed to run at basically shaft to shaft, so one to one, you just get two three inch pulleys, put them together, you're done. Okay. No speed adjustment then. So when you don't need the generator, you loosen up the belt and you tension the other belt that hooks up to your air compressor. Genius. If you don't need that, you've got a little um, hydraulic motor pump, all right? That then could run your backhoe. And your backhoe could have an alternator also turning at the same time. So it would be spinning the motor pump and, or, you know, just the pump and the alternator at the same time. So alternator to charge batteries, generator for AC power, air compressor, and hydraulic pump is pretty much your big four. And just make modular setup that the motor could be docked to any of the four or two at the same time because hydraulic pump and alternator would live pretty well together because the hydraulic pump is so small. Could probably run the same belt even, or, you know, whatever. Something like a serpentine belt would be really cool. And just figure out what speed it's supposed to be running at, okay. Figure out the native speed of that motor. Go from there. So, I guess it's all in how you define failure because I learned a lot from the experience. There's no way I could have known that without taking it apart. Or I suppose I could go talk to the service guy and say, hey, will this fit on here? And he'll say, no, it won't. I'm like, okay. That'd be no fun. Going through the process and figuring it out was totally a great use of three hours. It's about what it took, I think. Thereabouts, I videotaped almost the entire thing. So, just kind of fun to break out the tools and play with it again, just to go through the process. Neat to see how that thing was put together, the generator head. Um, I basically understood the process. It's a lot like an alternator. No permanent magnets. Uses a charged coil and the, wind, the windings and the stator and the not a commutator, commutator. So that part was backwards. Been a while since I looked inside an alternator too. Kind of cool. That is worth a cookie. Poss possibly more than one, and some lemonade. But yeah. So also now I've got the generator out of the way because that's where the shower house is going to go.
Well, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, that should work. Cool. I do things differently. Oh, and please, if you like any of this, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and click that notify bell. Drop a comment if you have any questions or ideas. Share, like, comment, subscribe, notify. Oh, and Patreon if you're really an awesome kind of person. Thank you so much for watching.